need because if I get the money from them, I can be satisfied with what I need right now. But what I'm thinking if it's what I, what I need is actually what I want because it's not satisfying or filling a void that I really need it. So I have to go back and do it over again. That's right. Because I'm depleting what I think I need, but it's actually a want. And it's actually materialistic. So we know it loses value as soon as you put it in your hands. And so now he has to go back to the same people, to the same gate, and beg for the same money. See, many of us are in a situation right now, certain things about life. Our lives, certain things about life, period, have crippled us. So we look toward help from, I would say, man to get us through other than, you know, getting by. What I mean by that is we look, we look for help from man to get us through, but yet we're not really getting through. We're just getting by. What do you mean by that, Pastor? I'm going to tell you, uh, I have to look up get through. Because when I see get through and get by, I honestly think it meant the same thing. But it actually means two totally different things. So get through is to reach a destination. Mm -hmm. Y'all following me? Yeah. To reach a destination. To, to gain approval or desired outcome. To become clear or understood. So that's to get through. I'm getting to a certain destination he was doing. He was just getting by. He wasn't getting through. Getting by is to succeed with the least possible effort or accomplishment. To succeed with the least possible effort or accomplishment. To make ends meet, otherwise survive. Mm. To make ends meet, otherwise survive. To proceed without discovered, criticized, or punished. So our crippled man was just getting by. See, this man, like many of us, men and women of God, he thought he was getting through, right? By reaching his destination, asking, begging for money. But really, all he was doing was trying to succeed by making ends meet. He was getting by. And some of us today are what, that's exactly what we're doing right now. Instead of thinking that we need to get through something or we, we have it in our brains that we're getting through it because we have it, we have what we need right now, we're just getting by. Because if we was getting through it, we wouldn't have to go back to need it again. Okay. All right. If I got through this thing, then it wouldn't be attacking me again. That means I just got by it. That means I just did enough to get through, to get by it today. I, I did just enough to survive today. But when I wake up the next morning, it's there again. So now I have to take my, the things of life that is crippling me and I have to make it back to the church. Because the doors are open, right? And then the, the church doors is the only place I feel I can get by. But instead, I'm not getting, I'm not, I mean, the church is the only place I feel I can get through. But instead, I'm not actually getting through, I'm just getting by because I've used the church, oh God, I feel you. I've used the church and the people of the church to be dependent upon, to be my crutch, to get through. But instead, I'm just getting by. That's another reason why, like, like Shantae's shirt is, the church has left the building. Now a lot of us are crippled. A lot of us are in a place where we feel we can't survive. We can't get through because I'm not sitting in the church. I'm not on the front row. The pastor can't lay hands on me like he or she did in the past. And now I feel as though I can't get through this life. Mm. Some of us are just getting by. But little did he know, men and women of God, he was asking for the wrong thing. That crippled man at the gate was asking for the wrong thing. 
Some of us right now are asking God for the wrong stuff. Jesus, come on. We are praying to God every day. We are requesting and asking God, God, I need this, I need this, I need that. I need you to make a way so I can get this. My God. I'm in somebody's house tonight. I mean today. I'm in somebody's prayer life that they prayed about last night. God, I need you to get me through this so I can go there. God, I need you to supply this so I can get there. And God is saying, that's just you getting by. You're not asking me for the right things. And you wonder why you're still sitting in the same stagnant position. You wonder why you're still sitting in the stagnant position you was in last month. Because you've just been getting by. This crippled man had been doing this for so long, he had no clue that there was something else that he really needed. Because think about it. This is over 40 years. Now, I don't know the exact time frame he began begging, but this man was a, about in his 40s, and he said he was crippled from birth. The Bible says that. So imagine years upon years, he was standing at the gate called Beautiful. Hmm. And then when I looked up that word, I was like, Lord, why was the gate called Beautiful? And the gate literally was called Beautiful because it, it, it was an establishment of where the people went for prayer. Jesus. And they knew that everything happened in this particular atmosphere Jesus. was beautiful. Jesus, Jesus, come And on. so he was at the gate called Beautiful, but he was asking for money, uh -huh. trying to get by. Uh -huh. Ah, God. Some of us are so stuck in our ways, we forget or don't even acknowledge that there is something that may not be tangible, but it's available and it's powerful. My God. Some of us right now, we want something that it, it, we don't believe it because we can't touch it. We, 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 can't, we can't believe in it because it's not something I can put in my hand. Right? But we have to realize that the things that you can't put in your hand is more powerful than the things you have in your hand. Yeah, that went over your head. That went over your head. You have to understand when, when, when God has given you something that people can't see. People can't, they, they can't put their eye, they can't put their head and their eyes and their hands on, uh -huh. but they can feel it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Something changes when you walk into certain areas. Yes. See, yes. people can't see it with their natural eye, which is the reason why we walk in the spirit. Uh -huh. Which yes. is the reason why it says in the Bible we walk by faith and uh -huh. not by faith. Because if I'm walking by faith and not by sight, I'm walking in the things that aren't tangible. But I'm accepting the things that are powerful. Amen. Mm, man, y'all need to get with me today. Listen. Come on. And guess what? It's available. Why is it available? Because it's available to you because you gave your life to God. My God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You got saved. God saved you. Yes. So yes. simply yes. because yes. he saved you, yes. you have the yes. Holy Ghost. Yes. You have the power. Thank you don't have to stand here and allow somebody to lay hands on you and then all of a sudden you have the Holy Ghost. Let me refrain. Let me get you from that, that, that old time religion. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. God says when you give your life, yes. he will give you then the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is a, it's a package deal. Yes. <laughs> it's a package deal. You get not only Jesus, you get God, you get yes. the Son, yes. and you get the Holy Spirit. Yes. All that happens when you say, Lord, save me. Jesus. All that happens when you confess with your mouth yes. and believe in your heart yes. that Jesus yes. Christ yes. died on the cross, My but God. yet rose on the third day with all power in his hands. Yes. Thank you, Father. Mm. Thank you. Mm. But see, we're so busy trying to wait on a pastor. We're so busy trying to wait on a prophet Jesus. to say you have it. Lord have mercy. Let me be the one. If that was what you was waiting on, let me be the one and the last one to tell you, man, you have it. Yes. Woman, you have it. Yes. You don't need somebody to stand in front of you to tell you you have it. Because the word in front of you says it, that you have it. The yes. word that you read confirms yes. that you have it. So you don't need another man to tell you what God has already given you. Oh my God, come on now, Pastor. Amen. My God, my God. So 
We move down to Acts chapter 3, verse 3. Now I'm going to change versions. And I'm going to read it in the New International Version. Acts chapter 3, verse 3 through 5. So it says, when, when he saw Peter and John about to enter. Now this is the crippled man. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Which is the regular thing he does. Right? He don't know who Peter and John is. He thinks, he, he thinks he's looking at two regular people walking in the temple like everybody else was. So it says, he asked them for money. Then verse 4, I love Peter. I, I love Peter. I think Peter is probably one of my favorite disciples in the yeah. whole story. Why? Because I relate yep. to Peter. Yep. Yep. And if you know anything about yep. Pastor Dez, yep. I am Peter yes, you all are. over. Yes. Now, I praise like David, uh -huh. but I, I'm a Peter yeah. character. Yes. Okay? Uh -huh. So if, if you look at it, it says Peter looked straight at him just, that, just as John did. And Peter said, look at us. So he got this crippled man begging Peter and John for money. Now, now when I look at that and Peter is saying, look at us, Peter is looking, Peter is actually, I guess he's painting a picture to the to this crippled man and say, look, why are you asking us for money? You see what I'm dressed in? Do I look like I got money for you? Wait a second. Stop begging me for money. I don't got money, right? Do you think I have money for you? Look at us. Uh -huh. Not only is he saying me, he's saying John. So come here, Jeremy. <laughs> come here, Jeremy. Yeah, go ahead, carry your baby with you. Okay. I, I, I'm also an illustrator, too, so I want y'all to see it in the natural so y'all can hone it in the spiritual. So just think about Jeremy and I, where Peter and John were walking, and a homeless yes. man stops us. Yes. Wants, uh, wants some money, and then Peter says, look at us. What you asking us for money for? Right. We look like we got enough money to give you. <laughs> not I, and definitely not John, because he's been walking with me this whole time. <laughs> we was walking with Jesus the whole time he was living, and we didn't get no riches. <laughs> ah, but there was something else God gave us. Jesus, come on. Mm, it was intangible. My God. <laughs> At this moment, <laughs> Peter, like I said, he was saying, I don't have money. But see, the crippled man had been doing this for so many years, he could care less what you look like. As long as you satisfy his right now need. Y'all need to catch that. Y'all need to catch that. Y'all need to catch that. He, he didn't care what you look like. As long as you can satisfy what he needed right now. So some of us in the church right now, some of us are waiting for church doors to open back up. Right? Some of us are waiting for church doors to open so that way the pastor can give us what we need right uh -huh, now. Uh -huh. But some of us have, have missed the mark, the reason why the church doors was closed to begin with. Because God wanted to let you know you don't need it from the pastor. Because I've already provided it for Jesus, you. Come I've on. already provided what you've been looking for yes. from that pastor. Only thing the pastor does is help sharpen the skills you already have. Come on. That's all he does. Come on. That's all the prophet does is confirm what I've already said to him. Come on. But see, the crippled man, like some of us, is looking for people to do something for us right now. Some of us have gotten so lost we can care less who is the person supplying the need My that God. we miss. In fact, we figure out that it's not a need, but yet it's a want. Jesus. We, 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 we forget, we care less what the need that we miss, the fact that it's not a need. Oh, Jesus. It's a want. We've gotten so consumed into things that we feel that we say we need, but yet it's a want. I, I need to get my nails done. My God. I, I need to get my feet done. My God. I, I, I need to get a haircut. Mm -hmm. I, I need that dress. Jesus, I need Jesus, those Jesus, shoes. Jesus. I'm in somebody's house. I, I need that car. Did you see that new Kia? I need that in my life. How many people have heard that or said that? I need that in my life. I need that. Did you see such and such in, 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 in the Bahamas? Just loving it. I need that in my life. I need a vacation. 
Lord, I need to be away from my kids at least one full day. Yeah, I said that yesterday. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yes. Shondo. Yeah, nah, nah, nah. So I need just one day. Just one day. I need, I need, I need. But God is not supplying those needs because he knows it's a want. Instead of saying, God, I need this. Say, God, I need for you to provide the power you've been already bestowed upon me. So that way I can speak the things that I really need in the atmosphere and it takes place. Amen. Or God, give me the discernment to figure out what's the need instead of a want. So therefore, when I begin to go to the throne of grace, I already know what to speak. My God. Because it says in the Bible, God knows what you're about to pray before you pray. Don't so he already knows what to answer yes. and what not to answer. Thank you. I'm going a little bit ahead of myself. Eh? But we have to realize that when it's a want and not a need, uh -huh. it won't satisfy or fill a void because you're going to go right back to where you started. Oh my God. If we wonder all of those needs that we said we needed, we got it. And then a couple days later, we didn't really need it. Mm -hmm. It's true. Mm. And, and, and we, we swipe that credit card. <laughs> we swipe that credit card. And now our credit card is about $300 before being maxed out. Oh. Now what? We, we, we really needed that, that position on the job. So we did everything that we thought we needed to do to get to that position on the job. Now we've gotten to that position on the job and that position is calling for more than what you expected it to call for. And now you're miserable. Now what? You really needed this man to be in your life? Ah, somebody's praying today. You really needed this woman to be in your life. You really needed this relationship to work. So you did everything you needed to do possible, even if it was compromising your walk as a Christian, because you needed them in your life. And now that you got them in your life, you realize that it wasn't green as you suspected it to be. Now you're miserable. Now what? Now what? Speaking, Pastor. Now what? And this is what the crippled man was. He was sitting there getting things that he knew he needed. He thought he needed, but it was really a want. Because after he depleted what he, what he wanted, he came back to try to get more. And he was doing this every single day. So he stumbled upon Peter and John, not knowing that they were disciples of Christ, not knowing that these two individuals walked with Christ, understood his teachings, was taught by him, and then was given the gift, was given the power, right? He walks upon them, and Peter says, look at us. So the man, it says, verse 5, it says, so the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Ah, you see, the man was already assuming, since he caught Peter and John's attention, he was going to get what he had been begging for all day and all year. Since he stumbled upon these two men, he just knew. And since they got his attention, because Peter said, look at us, he still thought he was going to get something. Mm -hmm. Little did he know what was about to happen. Somebody say, now what? Now what? Somebody say, now what? Now what? Somebody say, now what? Now what? Acts, verse six, Acts chapter 6, verse, uh, Acts chapter 3, verse 6 through 8. I'm going to read it in the New Living Translation. But Peter said... I don't have any silver or gold for you, but I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ of the Nazarene, get up and walk. Yes. Hmm. Wait a second now. Wait a second. You see, you see, Peter didn't have what the man wanted, but he had what he needed. Yeah. Hmm. Peter didn't have what the man wanted at that particular moment, but he had what he needed. So Peter would say, I don't have silver and gold for you. That, 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 that's not what I got. I don't have that. I don't have nothing tangible to give you. But I have something available and it's powerful. Come on, come on. 
I have something available my and it's God, powerful. My God, my God. Somebody say, now what? Now, now what? what? Somebody say, now what? Now, now what? what? Then Peter took the lame man by the right hand yes. and helped him up. Amen. As he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. Somebody say instantly. Instantly. Somebody say instantly. Instantly. Instantly his ankles and feet were healed and strengthened. Somebody say instantly. Somebody say instantly. Now somebody say now what? Now what? Somebody say now what? Now what? Guess what he did? Verse 8 says he jumped up, <laughs> stood on his feet, and began to walk. He jumped up, stood on his feet, and began to walk. Then walking, leaping, and praising God, he went into the temple with him. Thank you, Jesus. See, once the crippled man, now he was leaping up and down, praising God. So guess what? A crippled man that has been crippled for years, stood at the gate called Beautiful for years, begging for what he thought he needed, but it was actually what he wanted. Stumble upon two ordinary looking human beings. See, the disciples were ordinary men. There wasn't somebody pulled out of a pot that just knew everything in life. Jesus picked them for a certain plan and purpose. So these are ordinary people just like you and I, walking to church. And they see a crippled person sitting, laying down on the floor begging for money. So this person begs Peter and John to say, hey, do you have this? Can you spare this? And Peter and John says, look at us. Listen, I don't have the money to spare, but what I do have is this. By the name of Jesus Christ, get up and walk. My God, my God, mm. Jesus. How many of us think we have that power today? Amen. How many of us think we have the power that we walk and stumble upon someone who is disabled? And they're asking and begging for money. Jesus. We see them all the time. Mm. Some of us see them all the time. We either drive right past them, or we may give them something. It may not be money, but some of us may give them food. Some of us may give them this. But how many of us feel that we actually have the power to heal them of their infirmity? My God, Jesus. I may not have gold and silver to give you, but what I do have to give you is Jesus. more powerful than that gold My and God. silver. What I do have to give you is more available than that gold and silver because gold and silver may pass away. Uh -huh. But God's power is eternal. Yes. You have it until the day God calls you home. Yes, God. You don't have to, you, you can deplete the money and the money can go. The silver and gold can go. But the power that God gives you stays with you. And then the crazy thing about God's power is generational. A lot of us are looking for generational wealth. Yes. We're looking for that generational money, but God is saying, I have a generational anointing. Yes. Yes. And this generational anointing is not only going to be on you, but it's going to be on your seed. And your seed's seed. Jesus, Jesus. Because you decided to make a decision today that for God you live and for God you yes. die. You decided to say to yourself, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And because of that, God has been giving you the power to bless your generation. See, he was leaping up and down praising God, not because he received money from Peter and John, which was something he wanted, but like I said, he received complete healing from the power of God that was bestowed upon Peter, which is what he really needed. All this took place, check this out, y'all. All this took place after Jesus already ascended into heaven. Listen, all this stuff took place after Christ left. After Jesus the Christ left. This is when it took place. Why, why are you saying that, Pastor Des? Because after the pastor leaves, you still have that power. You don't have to wait on the pastor to heal you of your infirmities. You can speak healing to your infirmities right now. You can speak healing to any situation right now. You can say, God, I don't want them. I don't want to get out of this financially. I want to get out of this spiritually. Jesus, come on. Some of us are trying to get out of things naturally that we still are hell bound spiritually. My God, my God. Some of us feel that if I move from this neighborhood, I'll be safe. 
But little do you know that same demon is still traveling with you because you haven't realized that it's a spiritual attack, not a natural attack. But we're so happy. We, we just want to get through. We just want to, but instead we're actually getting by because we're dealing with the same stuff all over again. And all this took place after Pentecost. All this took place after the Holy Spirit showed just a little bit of power he had. So all this happened after the celebration. All this stuff happened after church. All this stuff happened on the way to a prayer meeting. So this is happening, let's just say, on a Wednesday night or a Thursday night midweek encounter. You're walking into the Excelling Church Georgia campus, and this has happened after Sunday. And you see something, or you see somebody on the street and they're begging for money. The same power that you had on Sunday is the same power you got on Monday. It's the same power you have on Tuesday. It's the same power you have throughout the week. So somebody say, now what? Now, now what? Somebody say, now what? See, after Jesus left the disciples to join his father in heaven, men and women of God, it was now the job of the disciples to put into action what they have learned and witnessed from Jesus. It is now, it was not a disciple's job. Because think about it. If the disciples didn't go forth and do what God, to do what Jesus asked, his word will become void. And there will be no power. And we will be sitting up here preaching and teaching getting blue in the face because there would be no no there would be no tangible proof red red proof of what the power of God is after Jesus left that same power Peter had to heal the crippled man who had been crippled I was some would say with 40 years men and women of God you have the same power to heal yourself from the things of this life that has left you crippled the same power the same power of things that have left you crippled. You have that power right now to cause it to get up. Yes. Mm. My God, mm. my God, my mm. God. What are you God. talking about, Pastor Des? I'm talking about the pain of your past. My God, my God. I'm talking about the pain of your past that has crippled you from my being God. into what God has called my you God. to be. Because you feel the pain of your past is going to keep you from where you needed to be. God is saying what you can do at that very moment is say, get up and walk. walk. You're, oh my God, my oh my God. God. The, the pain, God. The, the, the embarrassment, the embarrassment of your past, my the embarrassment God. of what you're dealing with right now. People are talking about you. Jesus. People don't like what you're doing. People are talking about your past and using that against you because they feel you can't make it out of this. You can sit there and say, Get up and walk. Walk. Right. Yes. Uh, I, I, I'm going to take it a little further. The, the, the hurt from others. My God. Those people that hurt you. My hurt God. you deep to your heart. Jesus. Hurt you so bad that when you see them, it does something to you. My God. Uh, they hurt you so bad that when somebody calls their name, it does something Go to ahead, you. Pastor. Them, they've hurt you so bad that if you if you have if you smell a certain scent and it brings back the remembrance of them, something My God. happens to you. My God. That's the enemy crippling you because he knows that if I can cripple you now in that position, you can't get through it. And if you get and if you can't get through it, that means you're only trying to get by it, which means My I can God. give it right back. Uh -huh. I can spin it right back. Yeah. But God says today you have the power yeah. to tell yeah. that cripple to get up and walk. Yes, yes, you have the power to tell your crippledness to get up and walk. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to go a little bit further. How about your failing relationships? Oh your failing marriage. Your, 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 failing, your failing connection. Guess what? Guess what? You still have the power to tell that marriage to get up. Uh, yeah. You still have the power to tell that relationship to get up. You still have the power to say, uh-uh, it ain't happening today. Right. It's not happening today. You're going to get up and walk. Amen. The, the, the embarrassment and pain of not, let's just say not just marriages, but let's just say the embarrassment of family life. The embarrassment of what family has done to you. 
the embarrassment of, of what your children are doing, the embarrassment of knowing that every time I go to a certain area, I see families with their kids. I can't celebrate like I want because my child is in jail, or my child is on the street, or my child is doing something, or, or me and my child just can't get along. So I'm crippled by that, but God is saying you have the ability right now to change the atmosphere, yeah. change on. the narrative, yeah. so that way you can get up and walk. You gotta preach. You, gotta preach. That's you right. can change the narrative right now. Come on. You can move right My now. My God. You can move right now. But Pastor Des, you're always talking about, you know, failing marriages and all that. What about those of us that have already been divorced? Guess what? God is saying, don't live in that divorce. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. God is saying, why are you still living in that divorce? Jesus. Why are you still living in that, in that separation? Jesus. God is saying, now you have the ability to move out of that. Because some of us have been channeled and we've been, we've been honed in, in, the, in the embarrassment of knowing that, uh -huh. that I no longer am married to this individual, uh -huh. but we're connected to so many other individuals Jesus, around us Jesus, that I can't Jesus, function the way I want to function, or I can't say hi the way I want to say hi. For I'm saying you right now, you better rebuke that enemy right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the people that you're not saying hi to, you don't know if God is using you in that atmosphere to do uh -huh. something great in their lives. So you need to tell that crippleness to get up and walk. Come on, come on. Get up and walk. And when you're telling all that crippleness about you to get up and walk, you're not telling that crippleness to get up and walk with you. You're telling yourself to get up and walk from the crippleness. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's what you're doing. Amen. You have the power to tell yourself to get up and walk. Yes. Now what? Get up and walk. Yes. Now what? Get up and walk. Yes. You have the power right now because the Holy Ghost is in you. Amen. God is in you. God Amen. has been in you Amen. since Amen. day Amen. one, since you confessed. So you got the power Amen. right now to say, get up and, get walk. Up and walk. You have the power right now to say, I don't want the tangible. I want the available and the powerful. Yes. Therefore, get Come up on. and walk. Yes. You've got the power right now to say in your atmosphere, everything that has crippled this atmosphere from moving in God's Jesus, purpose, my get God. up and walk. Get up and walk. Yes. You step. have the power. And while you're walking, you're stepping yes. out yes. on faith. Yes. Because you truly believe that in this time and this season, a lot of y'all need to get up and walk. Jesus, yeah. Jesus. And this time in this season, many of y'all need to get up and walk. <laughs> many of y'all, and even in this position, even yes. today, you were crippled with your praise. <laughs> many of us were crippled with our praise just in today alone. And God is saying, sometimes you got to speak to your praise. Yes. Mm. God is saying, sometimes you got to speak to your worship. My God. Because we sit here like this. My God. I love you, Jesus. I praise your name. My God. Hallelujah. 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 I give you name all the glory. That ain't gonna work. I'm rock spot crowd. Mama say, Mama Sai. Okay. Mama Kumusa. Uh-uh. I love you, Lord. And then you wonder why you're sitting in the same position every single day. My in your God. Life. You wonder why things aren't working in your life. Because you're not speaking with authority. You're not speaking with the power that God gave you. So when you praise God, you lift your hands high and you give God what he deserves. You say, God, have all the, have all the glory, yes. have all the power yes. in the mighty matchless name of Jesus yes. Christ. Jesus. Do something new in this atmosphere yes, right God. now. Yes, you have the power to shape and shift things. Come on. So Come give on. me the power that you've already bestowed. Give me a fresh anointing yes, and let me God. do something new in my atmosphere. Hallelujah. I call Hallelujah. forth the things that have crippled me to disintegrate so I can get oh, up God. and walk oh, in what I've been called to do. Yes. I say right now that I strengthen my body from the crown of my head speak to the sole go. of speak my go. feet. Go. I even speak in the psychology, the, yes. psychology, the stuff in my mind. I say the things that have crippled my mind. Come on. The stuff that has stopped me Come from on. thinking. Come on. That I can accomplish what God has given me to accomplish. Speak I God. speak to that crippleness yes. right now. And I call myself to get up and speak walk. Get up yes. and move. Yes. Get yes. up and move. Yes. I say move. Some of y'all was 
pushing earlier last month. God is saying, now that you've pushed, it's time to move. Yes. My God. Thank you, Father. Jesus. Thank you, Father. It's time to move. Yeah. It's time to get hallelujah, up. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's time to get up and walk. It's time to get up and walk. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's time hallelujah. to get up and walk. <laughs> my God, my God, my God. And, and then God is just looking for some of you that are bold enough to do it. Yes, yes, yes. God is just looking for some of y'all that are bold enough my God. to get up and walk. God is not asking for too much. I'm not sure. What he's asking you to do is not a lot. My God, my God. He's asking you to believe in what he's saying for you to do. So if it's time for you to get up and walk, if you truly believe that it's you, like I said, I'm very illustrative in this church. We're very illustrative. I want you to stand to your feet. I want you to stand to your feet. If that you believe that it's your time to get up and walk, I just want you to get up from your seat what direction you go into, but I want you to begin to walk. I want you to begin to walk, but what you're doing right now is you're walking into your purpose. You're walking into the calling that God has on your life. You're walking into what God is doing in your life right now. You're walking past that hurt. You're walking past that pain. You're walking past it right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You're walking past it. You're walking through it. You're not walking by it anymore. My You're going to walk through it. Yes. You're not walking by the pain anymore. Yes. You're going to walk through it. You're not walking by the embarrassment anymore. You're going to walk through it. You're not walking by the hurt anymore. You're going to walk through it. You're not walking by the things that have caught and to stop you. You're walking through it. You're going to do it right now. So if you feel that it's you and you need to walk, get up from your seat now and begin to walk. And as you're walking, give yes. God a praise. Give God a praise. Give God a praise. Give God a praise. Give God a praise. praise. Because like I said before, while you're walking and praising, what you're doing is you're stamping the approval that God is doing right now. You're stamping the approval for what is God doing for your life right now. And guess what I heard in the atmosphere? That as you're walking, you're not only walking for yourself, but you're walking for your family.
what was once latched on my God, to them. My God, my God, my God, my God, what was once latched Ooh, on to them. Jesus, what was Jesus, once crippling Jesus, them. Jesus, Jesus, what was once holding them back. God saying, now I release it. It will no longer hold or bound them. They will begin to move into the purpose I call them to be in, thus saith the Lord. So begin to walk with your children right now. Begin to walk with your niece or your nephew right now. Begin to walk with your grandchild right now. And God is saying, as I do it for them, I do it for you, thus saith the Lord. As I do it for them, I do it for you, thus saith the Lord. Walk with your child right now. Walk with your children right now. Walk with your grandchild, your niece, your nephew. Give your name 
name be honored. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. So at this moment, there are several options that you can do. If you need a, a prayer, you can come up and get a prayer by one of our intercessors. If you believe that your life gets better from here, yes. ask God.
Thank you for the faith that has been given back to us. Thank you for the strength. Thank you for the renewal. Thank you for all that you have done today and more. So, Father, we bless you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. And we love you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen.